All right, hello and welcome to this month's Heart Bunch video brought to you by the Utah State University Extension's Heart Initiative. Uh, today we're going to talk about being alone for the holidays on purpose. So whether it's due to a move or a personal loss or maybe potential family drama, or you just wanted to do something different, we wanted to offer you a few tips to help you do it right while also helping you and the other others in your life um, feel not so left out. So I'm going to start with uh, the first tip. And this one is about reframing your expectations from what you think the holidays should look, look like to what you want them to look like, right? So you might want to recreate family traditions, especially if you're spending the holidays alone or it's something kind of different or you have to, then you might, you know, there's cer certain traditions that you might want to keep or, you know, you see things uh, maybe in the uh, like in holiday movies that you kind of want to try to do. And that's that's cool, you know, but it can also be overwhelming. So consider asking yourself, um, you know, what do the holidays mean to me and what do I want them to look like? And then go from there. So I wanted to share an example from my own personal life. Um, since moving to Utah about three or four years ago, um, I've been having to spend the holiday, not the holidays, but at least Thanksgiving alone, because it's so close to Christmas and I still spend that with my, my family. Um, but spending Thanksgiving alone, um, I still wanted to keep the idea of togetherness and, and, you know, and also food, you know, food's super important. So um, I can't make all of the stuff that, you know, is kind of what a big family makes. So I just make enough, a different meal that works for two people. Um, and then it, uh, we go for a walk or we play in the snow if it happened to snow. And then we watch a holiday movie together. That's either something new that we haven't seen or something from like, you know, when we were in elementary school and we just kind of want to relive that. So I'm going to turn it over to Aaron to give us another tip. Thanks, Gabby. Um, yeah, so tip number two, if you're alone, is to use the time to reflect and recharge. And this can be different depending on, on what that means to you, but some ways to do this could be starting a gratitude journal, uh, working on a project you've been putting off, something around the house, um, treating yourself to a gift, going out for a meal, or just doing self-care, getting your nails done, kind of whatever you like to do that could make you happy. And Gabby kind of talked about making new traditions and recreating old traditions if you're by yourself. So maybe in practice for me, one of these things that I do for myself is gratitude journaling. Um, and I found it to be super useful for a couple of reasons. One, it really changes the way you're thinking about things from focusing on negative things to what are the things you're really thankful for in your life. And for me, it's been super helpful in redirecting your energy to all these good things that are going on in your life. You just notice them more. So if I was going to give one tip, maybe try that out, see how it works for you, or try some of these other tips. So I'm going to pass it off to Jared for tip number three. Thank you. Our third tip is even if you're not with loved ones over the holidays, you can still find um, some meaningful connections. So this could mean setting up a virtual gathering with distant friends and family. This could be finding an organization to volunteer with or maybe attending a local event. Also, I've learned that sometimes being alone for the holidays can free you up to recognize other people who may also be alone during the holidays. So a few years ago, I spent one of my first Christmases by myself and it was a little shocking to not be with family. And, and I was kind of looking around like, oh, who else can I spend this time with? And I realized that there were a lot of people I knew who were alone for the holidays. There were you know, friends, extended family. Uh, and I realized, wow, this is a really good opportunity for me to go spend time with them and help them not be alone during the holidays. And it turned out to be a, you know, a really good thing for both of us. So Thank you. And, and Sadie has tip number four. 
Yeah, thank you, Jared. My tip would be that if you usually spend the holidays with your family or friends and you decide not to this year, tell them your plans as early as possible. I wouldn't wait until the last minute. And I have personal experience with this coming from a co-parenting standpoint because I'm a single parent and my kids alternate holidays every year between households. So on years when my kids aren't home for a holiday, I usually go out of town and go on a solo trip. So I've learned not to wait until the last minute to tell my family that I'll be traveling instead of attending their holiday parties. And I try to give them plenty of time to process the news and come up with other plans. I also let them know my reasons for wanting to be alone and assure them that it's not permanent. You can also offer to balance activities together with solo activities if possible. For example, you can visit with them for a few days before or after the holiday or go out for lunch or help with a holiday errand. My compromise with my parents is that they get a night of decorating gingerbread houses with my kids on a different night if we are going to miss a holiday. Ashley, what about you? Thanks, Sadie. My tip is just to check in with yourself if you are spending your holiday alone and just assessing your own feelings to determine if you're trying to withdraw from other people um, and not finding joy in spending that time alone uh, and being sure to check in with yourself and check in with a mental health professional if you need to, because it actually goes both directions. Feelings of loneliness can lead to feeling symptoms of anxiety, symptoms of depression, poor sleep and other health changes, but also symptoms of anxiety and depression can lead to persistent feelings of loneliness. So there's a bi-directional relationship there. And you just want to check in with yourself over the holidays, especially to make sure that you're not feeling those symptoms. And an example of a place to look if you're like, oh gosh, I didn't even think about that, uh, would be psychologytoday.com. You can find a local therapist there. So if you're starting to sense those sensations or feelings, and maybe it's leaning more towards anxiety, depression, noticing you're not sleeping, don't hesitate to reach out. And one way that I like to just check in with myself is journaling. Um, like it doesn't have to be daily. It can be a weekly journal uh, or just some notes that you write down for yourself about how you're feeling or anything that's standing out to you. So just checking in with yourself on the days of the holidays, especially. And Gabby, I'm going to pass it to you to close us out. All right. Thank you. So in a nutshell, being honest, open and respectful can help keep the holidays special. You know, so, um, you know, connect with USU's Heart Initiative on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You can check out our other videos on YouTube as well. And then thanks for joining us and stay tuned for the next Heart Bunch video.